président, veuillez vous asseoir, mesdames et messieurs. The chamber is now back in session. La chambre reprend ses travaux. Now I would like to give the floor to the prosecution to continue his, his questioning to the expert. De leur questionnement de l'expert. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. Chanda, we were talking Monsieur about Chanda, the age-old enmity and the sources for that. I'd like to ask you, please, um, for a Vietnamese source um, which made reference or who made reference uh, to the enmity uh, between the two parties. Uh, this comes from uh, your meeting in March of 1978. En mars 78, uh, with the Vietnam Vice Foreign Minister, avec, uh, you've mentioned this already, Mr. Vo Dong Giang. And you refer to this in your book at page 60, page 60 de votre livre, evidence reference number 00192245. And uh, the paragraph at the top of the page of page 60, uh, Mr. Giang talks to you about the conflict going back over two decades. I wonder if you could perhaps shed a little more light on that conversation, how it came about, and to perhaps illustrate a little more fully what the Vice Foreign Minister uh, was talking about when he referred to the conflict going back over two decades. Uh, <coughs> this meeting with uh, Vice Foreign Minister Vodong Zhang was um, uh, extraordinary because in my uh, reporting of Vietnam uh, for all these years. Uh, this was the first time concerning the Vietnam Vietnamese Foreign Ministry uh, took a proactive step in inviting three foreign journalists to a, a private dinner with the Deputy Foreign Minister. To explain the long historical context of the conflict, uh, this is a kind of unusual background briefing. At the time, I was uh, we were not allowed to use his name, so when I reported those conversations in the Foreign Ministry Review, I said to senior Vietnamese official. Um, so, uh, Mr. Jian essentially says. Uh, what I have referred to in the past, Alors, I, the Khmer resistance to the idea of Indochina unity. Uh, Vietnamese maintain that there was no desire to form an Indochina federation. Uh, it was a bogey that was used by Vietnam's enemies. What Vietnam was looking for was a close cooperation between the three independent states of Indochina in order to foil all the uh, plots against socialism in that part of the world. And uh, so going back, to, he mentioned the uh, Geneva Conference in which the Cambodian De la side felt uh, abandoned because they were not given a seat at the table and Geneva Conference basically legitimized the uh, rule of uh, Prince Sihanouk or whole of Cambodia. There was not one part of Cambodia that was given to the uh, resistance forces. And then uh, throughout the 70s, when in the 60s, when Vietnam was advising the Khmer Rouge not to take the path of armed rebellion against Prince Sihanouk because Sihanouk was 
an objective ally because he was supporting Vietnamese revolution by allowing Vietnamese to um, transit arms uh, to their liberated areas through Cambodia, from the Sihanoukville port to the Vietnam border. And so it was for the sake of uh, overall revolution donc, uh, in Indochina, it was important that the Cambodians also cooperated with, Khmer, with, with Sihanouk at that period. Bon and then Sihanouk. when uh, Sihanouk was overthrown, Puis then Vietnamese had no obligation to um, support uh, Lan Nol, and hence they actually threw their support behind the Khmer Rouge fully and took part in the military Lan campaign against Lan Nol forces in 71. And, uh, but then, once Vietnam started negotiations with the Americans on ending the war, again, the situation like Geneva occurred because the Khmer Rouge felt that they didn't want to negotiate. They wanted a victory completely on their own, and they accused the Vietnamese of abandoning them and allowing American Air Force to bomb Cambodia. But despite that, even before the capture of Phnom Penh in April 17, 1975, Vietnamese provided arms and training to the Khmer Rouge, which enabled them to actually capture Phnom Penh in 75. So, Jiang's position was that, that we have this made tactical difference with the Khmer Rouge, but we strategically we supported them. And and the example was that we, Vietnamese did support them during the 75 operation. But since then, the Khmer Rouge had um, turned against Vietnam. And the suggestion was that this was an anti-Vietnamese plot with backing from China. And, and so that was the main thrust of his briefing. Thank you. I wonder if you can tell us the names of the two other journalists who accompanied you uh, to the dinner. Uh, one was uh, Roland Pierre Parango. Is it possible to spell his name? R O L A N D hyphen P I E R R E P A R I N G A U X. And the other journalist was from a Dutch newspaper, Handelsblatt, H A N D E L S B B L A T. And his name was Karel K A R E L Van V A N Wolferen W O L. F-E-R-E-N. F-E-R-E-N. Thank you. Merci I'd like to move on to a source that you cited in your book when you described the Cambodian attacks, the, the Khmer Rouge attacks on Koh Tral, or Phuc Quoc in Vietnamese, on May the 4th, 1975. In your book, and I think this is a footnote annotating page 13, ERN 00192198, you describe the source for uh, the attack on Phu Quoc and Ko Krachak Ses Island uh, to be a personal communication with an Australian Foreign Service officer um, who on the 5th of April 1979 in Malaysia had interviewed a particular South Vietnamese soldier who had lost his whole family of 12 in the original Khmer Rouge attack. And I think you say that's in relation to the Koh Krachak Se 
Island. Could you confirm the source you used? And do you have any comments on its reliability specifically? Uh, yes, uh, indeed, this was an Australian Foreign Service officer, and um, there was, um, this was a conversation I had with his uh, experience in interviewing some of the refugees, and um, and he had no particular reason to invent that story. And, uh, and I thought that story fitted with what I knew, so that's why I knew the story. In general terms, in your book, uh, there appears to be a, a lull in the fighting in 1976 or a lull in armed incidents between Vietnam, committed either by Vietnam or Cambodia. Um, and you were, you were asked whether you had seen any telegrams, internal telegrams. Um, Her Honor Judge Cartwright asked you about that. Can I ask you the same question in relation to whether you had seen any internal military reports, whether you have seen any internal Khmer Rouge military reports from the border area back to the party centre in Phnom Penh? I do not recall seeing it, and I, if I had seen it, uh, I would certainly have mentioned it in the book. Uh, there would be no reason if I um, had such very important information not to include it. So I, I don't recall seeing it. Given the history of the conflict, that you have outlined in, in detail in your book and you described for us in evidence. Uh, would it have struck you, or does it strike you as unusual or likely or not that there may have been armed incidents in 1976 committed either by Cambodia or by Vietnam? No, not at all. I think um, there was enough tension. Um, and uh, now in the light of what we know regarding um, happenings in 1976, that um, the fact of Pol Pot changing the date of the party and certain veteran members like Kiyomiyas, Nesrang, um, who are um, more in favor of keeping the date of the party, 1951. In other words, they were seen as close to Vietnamese thinking. Those are the people who are sent to S21. And Given the fact that there was a turmoil going on inside Cambodia regarding the new orientation of the party, um, I would be surprised if there were some clashes as well along the border. <coughs> Just a little clarification. I referred to military reports internally, internal military reports, and Her Honor Judge Cartwright referred to telegrams. If you were writing your book today, would you avail yourselves of those sources if you had, if you were able to, to consider them? Absolutely. This might be an obvious question, but why would you use such sources? Uh, because if the source is um, 
First of all, it's credible that crédible, I am convinced that that indeed was si an internal document la certitude qu'il s'agit effectivement d'un document interne was et si la date accurate and the person who was sending it si uh, was someone in the position of authority to be able to do so. Um, it would be very important um, part of evidence to show how the conflict was developing in the border. Thank you. I'm moving on to 1977 now. And in your book, uh, you describe how Dans votre livre, at page 87 of your book, I'm sorry, ERN 00192272, at page 87, page you describe 87, how Khmer Rouge forces had been raiding Vietnam's Rouge border provinces since, quote, January 1977. Are you able to tell us what sources you used uh, for the date as early as January 77? And if so, could you tell us? I do not um, recall exactly um, how I came to that date, January 77, but I would suspect that because I interviewed a um, whole lot of people along the border during my trip in March 1978, I had asked people about their history and where they have moved and what happened. So it's quite possible that it was from uh, such interviews that I uh, realized that there was some attack in January 77 as well. Différents entretiens avec de nombreuses personnes que j'ai pu me rendre compte qu'il y avait eu des attaques dès janvier I've asked you about sources uh, from, can I say, important people in the region. In relation to the ordinary people on the ground, the people who may have been directly affected by the incidents along the border, can you help us please with what sort of interviews you conducted, how many there may have been, and whether you cited a few, some, or all of those in your book. Um, and this was one of the most important um, part of my reporting, is to um, actually um, give the government mind their sleep and try to talk to people directly. And when I could um, speak directly or have an interpreter, but who was not necessarily associated with the government. So I tried to talk to people independently in um, any all occasions I had um, opportunity to talk to them. And I may have used only a few uh, anecdotes just to provide some color and human interest in the otherwise um, dry political discourse. So by no means I used all the interviews. But these interviews are provided a kind of very rich background, a carpet which, uh, on which I could place on the other major political events that were happening. So the interrelationship between life of a simple individual and much larger forces operating beyond that person's uh, reach is something that uh, personally I was uh, very interested in finding out. And so I did interview quite a few people. Forgive me for seeking clarification of the general term quite a few people, and I appreciate you may not be able to be specific. 
that you can give us an example, an estimate of how many people, ordinary people, you may have interviewed? Dans la catégorie des gens ordinaires I would say avec lesquels vous auriez in, eu des entretiens. Um, visiting a camp, say, dans les visites d'un camp, in par Tainin exemple, or, à Tainin, or Hatien, ou uh, um, Hatien, depending on the time one has on, at one's disposal, le temps disponible, and depending the time it takes to interpret, uh, seek out details, follow up questions. I would say in, 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 all, in any of these sort of visits, I would interview perhaps six, seven, eight people. Uh, that would be maximum given the time constraint. So, uh, again, I made so many visits that so it's pretty difficult to remember as to how many people I visited. Thank you. At the same page from which we have just quoted, page 87, uh, you refer to, in March 77, the Khmer Rouge army units in the eastern regions were, and I'm quoting you, taken off their production duty to be combat ready. I can hear a, a phone. I wonder if somebody could... Turn it off. Thank you. Um, sorry, um, the quote that uh, you that I, I cite from you is that in March 1977, uh, Democratic Cambodia Army units were taken off, quote, taken off their production duty to be combat ready. Can you help us please with your sources for that particular assertion? On page 87, um, the second line of page 87, uh, second, sorry, the third line of, of page 87 from the top. Um, I have no clear memory as to the source, but it can be either in radio non Penh broadcast, um, and that is most likely that, the, given the language I used, it was most likely a radio non Penh broadcast uh, saying that this is what is happening. Um, but it could also be... Um, Cambodian refugees whom I interviewed uh, in Vietnam. But I would guess it will be first. Vietnam. Mais a priori, je pense que c'est plutôt la radio. C'est la phraseologie de la radio. Ça. Can I move on to the um, description je passe of à la the Hungarian journalist, Mr. Sandor? Giori, and I apologize if I pronounce his name incorrectly. I can spell it S A N D O R. New word G Y O R E. Oh, I, sorry, G Y O R I. And the Hungarian journalist has been discussed, but not yet named previously in your evidence. Uh, matin, um, you discussed this at pages 192 through 194. Uh, 192 and I wonder if you can perhaps tell us a little more of the story que vous nous un peu of uh, Mr. Giori. First of all, Giori. confirm the source from which you heard this story, this, this story, and secondly, uh, perhaps talk about the invitation uh, that Mr. Giori received, what happened to his notes and his papers, and uh, whether they were eventually returned, if, if it is still fresh in your memory, or if not, refer to your Certainly, I certainly remember very well. Sander was the president. Monsieur le Président, pardonnez-moi. Mr. Hu, Mr. President, please. The President, uh, 
The floor is your Mr. François Roux. Monsieur François, vous avez la parole. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Roux, pardonnez-moi d'interrompre mon, Forgive me mon for confrère. Interrupting my learned friend. Je suis en train, en train de perdre patience. But I'm losing patience. Nous sommes en train d'assister à un exercice extrêmement professionnel de ce que l'on appelle en common law une examination ou bien une contre-examination. Je félicite mon confrère pour cet excellent exercice. Mais je ne suis pas pour ma part disposé à continuer pendant des semaines et des mois dans ce type de procédure. Et je souhaiterais que la Chambre se prononce I would like the chamber sur ce que nous attendons to de, des questions what we que les parties peuvent poser. Je rappelle que put. nous sommes dans une procédure de civil law. That this are civil La Chambre law a déjà posé de très nombreuses questions the que the à l'expert. Et the expert mon collègue n'a pas manqué dans ces questions. And in his questions, de rappeler que plusieurs de ces questions ont déjà été évoquées ce matin. Mais avec morning, le professionnalisme qui le caractérise, il veut aller plus loin, toujours plus loin, comme un excellent exercice de common law où tout doit être prouvé. Et c'est pour ça que je me suis levé maintenant must, must pour la Énième fois, on demande à Monsieur l'expert de prouver quelle est sa source. Pour ma part, ça m'est totalement égal de savoir que M. Kyosampa n'a pas voulu déjeuner avec telle personne. Quand j'ai un expert de la qualité de M. que nous avons ici, je n'ai pas besoin de justifier de la totalité de ses sources. As this one. I do not think it is Ce à quoi nous sommes en train d'assister, c'est un sources. double détournement de procédure. This is Et je me permets d'attirer l'attention de la Chambre. Like J'ai toujours dit to this. que je souhaitais que dans nos juridictions internationales, in on courts, prenne le meilleur des deux systèmes de common law et de civil law. Civil and common law Mais aujourd'hui, ici, nous sommes But en train de prendre le pire des deux systèmes. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a eu un interrogatoire that extrêmement détaillé par la Chambre, civil law, et maintenant nous sommes en train d'assister à un interrogatoire extrêmement détaillé par le procureur, common law. Et je vous promets que si nous continuons ainsi, nous sommes encore en audience l'année prochaine. Si pour chaque expert qui compte on doit passer des heures à vérifier quelles étaient ses sources. Nous sommes encore là l'année prochaine. Or, je rappelle une fois encore qu'il y a eu plus d'une année d'instruction. J'aimerais que les coprocureurs qui ont participé à cette instruction soient ramenés à cette procédure. Ou bien, elle n'a servi à rien, disons-le publiquement. I would like this to be on the Pourquoi record. toutes les questions évoquées aujourd'hui n'ont-elles pas été posées pendant l'instruction Depuis ce matin, je n'ai pas entendu 
une seule référence à la procédure d'instruction Est-ce que ça veut dire que nous avons définitivement abandonné l'idée qu'il y a eu une année d'instruction J'aimerais donc, sur ce premier point, que la Chambre puisse décider si oui ou non nous allons continuer pour chaque témoin avec des examinations, cross-examinations, c'est-à-dire avec une procédure typiquement comme de l'eau, qui a parfaitement son intérêt et sa logique quand il n'y a pas eu de procédure d'instruction et quand les juges de la Chambre ne posent pas eux-mêmes des questions aux témoins. Mais aujourd'hui, cette procédure de common law n'a rien à apporter de plus à la manifestation de la vérité. Deuxième détournement de procédure. Je comprends parfaitement à travers les questions posées par les coprocureurs que ce qui est recherché à l'instant, c'est d'accumuler des preuves pour le dossier numéro 2. On a parlé de M. Kyosamban. On a parlé plusieurs fois de M. Yengsari. Que je sache, ces deux personnes sont en prison à quelques mètres d'ici. Elles ne sont pas dans le box des accusés. Je dis qu'il n'est pas correct de vouloir acter aujourd'hui des preuves contre des personnes qui ne sont pas là. Et je ne vois pas comment nous, ici, qui sommes juristes, nous pouvons accepter ce détournement de procès. Nous sommes là pour des faits dont Doug est accusé pour S21. Il y a bien longtemps que je n'ai pas entendu parler de S21 aujourd'hui, sauf une toute petite allusion il y a quelques minutes. Voilà, Monsieur le Président, les observations que je voulais faire. Je fais observer très respectueusement à la Chambre que si nous continuons à ce rythme, demain, les partis civils vont poser leurs questions à l'expert sur le même mode et quand sonnera la pendule demain à 4h15, la défense n'aura pas eu la possibilité de poser une seule question. Si c'est ça que nous voulons, Dites-le et nous partons. Say so and we shall leave. Merci. Thank you. The president, le président, uh, the co-prosecutor, you can now take the floor. J'invite le co-procureur à Thank prendre you, la parole. If we add up the number of times the defense has spent si objecting. objecting du nombre de questions et du nombre de temps consacré à la, à la défense à faire objection to submissions made um, on behalf of the co-prosecutors aux arguments présentés par les coprocureurs we would see that we're wasting time with these sorts of objections um, il s'agit ici the objection is baseless très important consacré and contains a number of allegations that i will not respond to cette dernière observation contient un certain nombre d'allégations auxquelles je ne prendrai pas la peine de répondre. Cependant, comme je l'ai déclaré la semaine dernière, nous sommes ici dans ce prétoire pour entendre des éléments de preuve en public. Je rappellerai à Maître Roux, ainsi qu'à vous, Chanda, Monsieur le Juge, Monsieur le Président, que M. Chanda n'a pas eu l'occasion d'être entendu en tant que témoin dans le cadre de l'instruction. Il n'y a pas de l'occasion de M. Chanda n'a pas été entendu dans le 
in the same way as a witness would be in other tribunals, as an expert witness would be in other tribunals. The co-prosecutors are seeking to establish Mr. Chanda's expertise, which is the purpose of the series of questions I asked at the beginning. Ce qui faisait l'objet de la série de questions que j'étais en train de poser. Designed to express Mr. Chanda's knowledge objectif est of the policies la connaissance de Mr. Chanda of the two countries in question. Des deux pays qui font de nos this débats. is the nature of the questions that the co-prosecutors have been asking. Questions que les co Such interruptions posent. themselves de tels are a waste of time sont en elles-mêmes une perte de temps. Telle est l'opinion des coprocureurs. J'ai choisi avec soin les questions que je voulais poser. Et je ne sais pas poser des questions à ce témoin s'agissant de chacune des sources qu'il a posées. Utiliser l'objectif et démontrer les politiques et les raisonnements sous-jacents, s'agissant des déclarations faites par l'accusé, ce que l'accusé ne souhaite pas prendre parti avant le 31 décembre 1977. Il incombe au coprocureur de prouver la responsabilité de l'accusé vis-à-vis des faits qui lui sont reprochés. Je constate que nous n'avons que deux jours que nous avons consacrés à entendre M. Chanda et à conclure ma question à la fin de la journée. J'aurais souhaité that now cannot take place. I invite the trial chamber to rule that this objection is irrelevant and baseless. I would invite the chamber to declare that these observations are non-founded and devoid of pertinence. The president, the civil party lawyers. Would you wish to make any comments in relation to the objection of the defense counsel concerning the questioning of the prosecution? The floor is yours. Jonas, thank you. I will take ten seconds of your time. Maître Werner, just to put on the record that we do support the co-prosecutor's position, and I would like to put on the record that as matters stand now, if that can help your determination, my group has one question for this expert, which with the answer should take two minutes. That's what we have for this expert. If that can help your determination, I'm grateful. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, I have noted that the defense repeats again and again fundamental views on international proceedings and uh, the role of civil or relationship between civil and common law. I think everybody has noted these observations and uh, they need not to be repeated again and again. That is the first preliminary remark. Then, to the content, um, Due to the fact that the chamber has put questions to the expert, does not mean that the parties are not allowed or are limited in their right to ask questions, and that is really not the nature of civil law. Of course, and to prove the case or to support the prosecution from the perspective of the civil parties, the parties are allowed to ask questions, of course, if they are not repetitious, which was not the case so far by the questions that the prosecutors have put to the witness. And 
the issue I would like to remind that the issue that we are talking here about is armed conflict. And of course, regarding to this issue, it is not S21 to which the questions should be limited. And of course, the leaders and their role and their les dirigeants, decisions et leur rôle, and their les positions qu ont prises, um, et play leur a role to consider role if here an armed conflict nous permettre de considérer si oui ou non un conflit armé a bien eu lieu entre 75 et 79. So that I request the chamber et donc to je demande à la chambre de rejeter the Objection by the defense. De la défense. Je vous remercie. Monsieur le Président, si vous permettez, Mr. President, if you please give me the leave, uh, just as for, for, the, for information's sake, to contribute to the debate here, I believe that group number three will probably not have any specific questions to put to the expert witness, so this to allow you uh, to uh, come to a quick decision. Thank you. President, uh, the floor is yours. Maître Kemsoon, Kemsoon, thank you. Vous donne la parole. Mr. President, Maître Your Honours, Monsieur, Monsieur le Président, Madame, Messieurs les Juges, as a lawyer of a civil party, a Group Four, I have noticed en tant que that, co du groupe 4 des parties civiles, j'ai remarqué. I also do not have many questions to ask je, je uh, Mr. Nayan Yanda. But my observation Yanda. at this stage is that the objection by the defense not to have many questions to be asked or whether he thinks it's a waste of time is unreasonable. Because Nayan Chanda is an expert, we can't even say that it, it, what he wrote is a historical information for Cambodia, Vietnam, and the relations with other countries, which leads to the war between Cambodia and Vietnam. So it is my observation and understanding and suggestion that questions shall be asked by the prosecutors, the civil party lawyers, and of course the defense, because we only have two days, unfortunately, that we have to ask this witness. But what I want is that for the Cambodian people, both inside the country and at the international stage, to know what is the cause which lead which leads Cambodia to fight wars amongst themselves, as written in his book, The War After the War. So Mr. Nayan Chana is an expert. He can shed light on the questions that we once answered. And the Cambodian people in the whole country and the people in the world want to know today. And I don't think it is the waste of time of anyone. And if the defense si la défense thinks the questions are repetitive, le then the president would forbid such à questions. Le président ne permettra pas à ce que de telles questions soient so posées. So even if thinking of the Même civil law proceedings si or the common law proceedings, this is the rights or the obligations of the defense. De, However, it is my Germanie, suggestion and submission that questions will be asked clearly and fully so that Mr. Nayan Chanda can shed light on this topic. And of course, I support the stance of the co-prosecutor. Monsieur Chanda puisse nous éclairer sur toutes ces questions. I would like to seek uh, the President's permission. Je the President, the floor is yours. Obtenir la, votre président, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Oui. President. Merci, Dionis. Monsieur le Président. 
it is my observation that the defense has attempted to defend his client si is appropriate. Je constate que However, he raised the issue that this is the proceedings used in the civil law, not in the common law system. De civil law et de common law. So he said, what il we use is related to the common law proceeding, but he has no real ground for his objection. And it is not Mais only for the day, but it's from the start of the trial, from the 30th of March. We are using the civil law system. De ces débats, nous avons utilisé that is, the judges play a role in asking questions to the parties and to all the witnesses. Un rôle dans But in the common law system, the judges do not put questions. They just sit and all the other parties would ask questions. Pas, ne pose pas de questions et il revient au and that de is the common law system. Et ça, so here we are implementing the civil law system and it is appropriate and I would like the chamber to reject the objection raised by the defense. Thank et you. Sur cette base -là, je propose de ne pas retenir les objections soulevées par la défense. Je vous remercie.
President. Le Président. On this particular issue, there is the objection raised by the defense. First, the chamber would like to thank all parties for providing their observations regarding this objection. And the chamber decides the objection by the defense is unclear is groundless and it is therefore rejected. The co-prosecutor can proceed with their questions to the expert, but the chamber would like to remind the co-prosecutors that please be cautious in raising questions regarding the facts Faire attention before this expert, questions, des faits, that is, to avoid repetitive questions, que which questions might have been already asked by the judges. Uh, and as I said, the co prosecutors should attempt to avoid this repetition. The floor de is yours. Poser des questions répétitives en substance. Je laisse donc la parole au Thank you, Mr. President, and I will certainly take on board uh, the trial Monsieur chamber's comments. Poursuit, and perhaps, uh, if I can be uh, very specific in the following questions I have for uh, Mr. Chandler. Quant aux questions que je suis sur le point de Mr. Chandler, poser. I would like Monsieur to Chandler, take you back um, to the Hungarian journalist. And rather than ask you to repeat the story or discuss in detail de the story. De, dans les détails, you mention in your book at vous, page 194 ERN 0019-2379 that the pictures and cassettes de, and notes of the journalist were confiscated Vous avez mentionné que les documents de ce, uh, cette personne ont uh, été confisqués par le Politburo vietnamien. And you, you give some Et vous avez donné un certain nombre d'informations uh, pour laquelle ces documents ont été confisqués. Point, Il s'agissait des notes d'interview. Pouvez-vous étayer ce point Réponse. Uh, Sander uh, Gheori, the Hungarian journalist, he was uh, invited and assisted by invité, um, officials in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and it was at the initiative um, of General Chan Man Cha, who was a uh, senior general and of South Vietnamese uh, uh, origin. General. And Clearly, General Chan Man Cha acted on his own initiative. He was outraged by the brutalities, and he wanted the world to know. But the Politburo had a different idea. The Politburo did not want to reveal this news without considering the implications of this explosive news uh, going out to the world, because they were looking at Cambodia incident as part of an overall strategic picture involving China and other countries, um, and they wanted to be sure as to how to reveal this information impliquant d'autres pays, la Chine, best for um, Vietnam's strategic interest. Et, 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 and that is why I think that having been given the opportunity to go and see the massacre, his et films and cassettes were confiscated by the security films, people, and it was returned to him only um, after December 31st, 1977, when the conflict was public, de raid, so that Vietnamese had no reason to hold on to that those information. À partir du moment où le Vietnam n'avait plus de raison de conserver ces informations et ces documents. Can I turn you to le coprocureur international, je vous remercie. Uh, nous allons maintenant passer à la page 196 uh, de votre livre. Uh, which is at ERN 0019-2381. You've uh, discussed this already, but I have a specific question. Vous avez déjà parlé de cela. After months of planning, 
the Vietnamese army uh, launching vous avez dit an important mois, but unpublicized military operation against une Democratic Kampuchea. opération de grande October envergure 1977. en octobre 1977 contre le in Kampuchea your démocratique. Expert opinion, Selon votre opinion, en qualité d'expert, pouvez-vous nous dire pourquoi une telle attaque n'a pas été rendue publique Pourquoi elle a été pourquoi, elle devait, euh, pourquoi sa préparation était restée au secret I think the Vietnamese uh, calculation was le calcul that vietnamien était le suivant. An open uh, conflict un conflit uh, with Cambodia avec le Cambodge inevitably involve other countries impliquerait inévitablement d'autres pays. To that kind of attack. And so, en réponse and like à ce type d'attaque, comme les Khmer Rouge ont fait dans le passé, ils aussi ont attaqué sans dire à personne qu'ils étaient attaqués. Les Vietnamese ont fait des attaques sans faire part à qui que ce soit et les hoping that they would get the lesson and perhaps either negotiate or this defeat would inspire internal rebellion et penser que la défaite allait inspirer une rébellion à l'intérieur du pays several times vietnamese officials say j'ai entendu plusieurs reprises des responsables dire que Either ce conflit pouvait trouver Pol sa résolution soit policy, si Pol Pot devenait raisonnable dans le cadre de ses politiques, soit him. si des personnes à l'intérieur du parti le démettaient de ses fonctions. C'est une option option qu'ils ont dû was prendre in order to à savoir en procéder à l'invasion du Cambodge, they mais pour to make this thing secret leur donner une marge de manœuvre et garder ces options à disposition, leur, leur donner la possibilité de choisir l'une ou l'autre des options, ils ont choisi de ne pas Can rendre I turn page 318 Puis-je maintenant ERN euh, parler de la page 318 de votre livre, ERN 00183 503 How in June of 1978, Vietnam began Vietnam its unpublicized aerial bombing of Cambodia. Bombardement aérien you describe flying as many as 30 sorties a day. Donc, vous a similar de question. 30 sorties Why, aériennes, 30 bombardements after par war jour, hein. had officially been declared, mm. or at least vous avez dit que, à la suite de ça, les, euh, en décembre 1977, les relations diplomatiques ont été rompues. Et avec les Vietnamiens, tels que vous l'avez décrit, qui euh, ont procédé à ces bombardements. Encore exactement quelle était la mais je pense pouvoir dire que les Vietnamiens sont les seuls à ne pas vouloir que les Khmer Rouges eux-mêmes ont des bombardements. Et puisque les Vietnamiens ne voient pas de raison pour les dire au public that they are stepping up the pressure on the Khmer Rouge because euh, that might again bring protests from other countries and because this is an expansion of the war not only on the ground but on the air so that could have been the reason why they did not publicize it Thank you You were asked by my colleague some questions concerning a Cambodian man by the name of Ross Sarun, R-O-S-S-A-R-O-E-U-N. And uh, you refer to this in page 86 of your book, which is ERN 00192272. Uh, and in your, the Alors, footnotes la, for that passage, de, page, you refer to an passage, interview that you had with him personally on the 14th of January 1981 in Phnom Penh. Can I first ask you to confirm the interview and how it took place, que but more particularly lieu, how credible you found his story to be, and whether you had or sought any corroboration. 
Vous a-t-il paru nécessaire de chercher um, une confirmation I had met, uh, Avez-vous recherché une confirmation of my trips and, um, Mais bon, j'avais rencontré Rossa Lund parmi les différents experience. Euh, Uh, during the Khmer Rouge period, and uh, among many things, he recounted this story, and the fact that he himself was raised by a Vietnamese person as an orphan, he had a wife was Vietnamese, um, and the account he gave sounded extremely plausible. And later on, I found out that 870 was indeed uh, the code name for uh, Central Committee. And this is something that someone so simple person would have no way of knowing what would be 870, that he actually saw that letter, I remember it was 870. So I had no reason to doubt the accuracy of the story he told me, and it fitted very well with other sources I had about that period. When you wrote your book, Mr. Chanda, were you aware of any confessions made by Vietnamese nationals at S21? I'm not asking for the detail, just your knowledge of whether there existed such confessions when you wrote the book. Yes, I think I, I knew there were uh, confessions I had personally seen um, sheets of paper on my first trip to uh, Tulsleng, and uh, there were, um, of course I could not read them, but I, and I read some which were written in French, and um, some in English, but mostly they were in Khmer, and, but I was told that there were uh, some confessions by Vietnamese. Certaines de ces confessions euh, émanaient de personnes vietnamiennes. Can you tell us who Le told you that? Qui vous a dit cela Pouvez-vous nous le dire If you can remember. Si vous vous no, I don't remember. I, Réponse, um, because non, at that time, there were uh, several people who were looking after the papers in Tourslang, the second floor office. I do not recall who told me that. Bureau du deuxième étage, donc je ne me souviens pas. Do you recall or did you take a note of the dates of any of the confessions from Vietnamese at S21? No, I don't. Returning to the apparent lulls in the hostility, between Cambodia and Vietnam, or, or certainly a lull in the reporting of any hostility. Was there any significant shift in policy between or from the Cambodians or the Vietnamese in that period of 1976, going through 1977? I think the uh, 76 period was uh, the period when uh, Pol Pot faced some opposition, opposition within the party. And uh, again, my recollection is that there were uh, many references to um, reactionaries, enemies within the party. And the fact that um, Pol Pot decided in, in 76 to actually withdraw temporarily from Prime Minister's position uh, was kind of seen by experts as indication of some difficulty he's having inside the party. And, um, and also the fact that the um, the name of the party was changed. Um, 
these indications of internal trouble Et could perhaps be de troubles internes one reason why the focus was not so much on the border ensuring all parts control of the party at that point was more important than uh, fighting the border but at the same time i recall um, Yang Sari made a speech in December uh, 76 in which he had um, very clearly alluded to uh, aggression against Cambodia would be resisted and uh, loss of territory. So kind of the words he used were clearly uh, indicative of uh, Vietnam being the uh, enemy. But um, so that's, that would be my, my hunch. En tout cas, voilà mon interprétation des choses. And on the Vietnamese side, was there any significant shift in policy throughout 1976 through into 77? Um, 76 was an important year for Vietnam because that was the first year after the reunification of the country. They are drawing up their fourth five-year plan and preparing for the party congress in December. So in that context, Vietnamese were more preoccupied with the domestic issues, but I would uh, not be surprised if the Vietnamese were aware of the internal opposition Pol Pot was facing, and they might have thought um, that would be the way Vietnam would like to see if Pol Pot was removed and friends of Vietnam came to power, that would be perhaps the ideal outcome from the Vietnamese point of view. Point de vue and that could be also the reason why there was uh, perhaps uh, not much activity along the border. Et c'est peut-être dans ce contexte-là, donc d'une activité interne plus intense, que la frontière aura connu. Mr. President, it's at half past four. I don't know whether you wish me to continue or whether this is a convenient moment. Alors, il est 16h30, Monsieur le Président, serait-ce le moment the, the President, uh, we cannot continue. Alors, nous, nous Do you have uh, more questions? So si the Chamber is adjourned now and we'll resume tomorrow matin, starting from 9 a.m. Security officer, take the accused back to the detention facility and bring him back to the chamber before 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And court officer, you are instructed to take the expert back to his residence and invite him back to the chamber before 9 a.m. tomorrow. And Mr. Nayan Chanda, the chamber would like to thank you for your effort and time to provide testimony. However, because of your expertise in varieties and various fields that other parties would like to ask you for clarification, so the chamber will need another day to have your presence and you will be finished tomorrow. And the parties, you can participate in the hearing tomorrow from 9 a.m. Bien, l'audience est levée jusqu'à demain 9 h du matin.